Okay, Hebrews, please. Hebrews chapter 10. Try to make this shorter than normal here. Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 32. And again, the Bible says, But call to remembrance the former days in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye become companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have made in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall will come, come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe in the saving of the soul." So we have a great story here in the book of Hebrews about people of, of God's people walking in faith. And uh, they endured affliction all for the name of our Lord Jesus. And if we see it today, uh, many too often, right, we see people faithfully serving the Lord that, that, that are suffering. I told you on Sunday, I got a chance to talk to Brother Jim Olmstead uh, this weekend. And, and he's been in a wheelchair now for four years. And... Uh, yeah, he remember his heart. He wanted to go to the Philippines. He has started a great work over there. And uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what situation they are with the churches down there. I don't think he's going to Mountain View Baptist, which was uh, his sending church to begin with there. But pray for him. Uh, both he and his wife, Peg, who's on oxygen all the time now. She's been sick for quite some time. And many others. Randy Davis, his wife, Scooter. Uh, and Randy's been serving the Lord for over 50 years, right? Great testimony. Sends out an email, uh, a text every week to try to encourage people, right, to stay faithful. And uh, I know Bonnie Niles was uh, was Scooter's best friend, so uh, it was a big uh, a big hurt for her too. So she's grieving at the present time. But you know, uh, the writer of our text today said he was suffering for Jesus in Hebrews 10:34. He said, "For ye had compassion of me and my bonds." So he was a servant of the Lord, and he was in bonds. And we know the Apostle Paul had a great pedigree, right? He was a Jew of the Jew, and yet we saw all the things that he had gone through, all the sufferings that he had been put through, and yet he never turned his back on the Lord. To some small degree, we can identify with him. Life sometimes hurts, and uh, sometimes the enemies of truth are going to afflict us. And yet we haven't come to, to blows here or come to where we're suffering our life uh, but we know that, that persecution is going to be coming to the church. I mean, it really is. In other parts of the world right now, so I've been bringing in that, uh, that Voice of the Martyrs magazine. I don't know if you guys have, have seen that or not, but I strongly recommend you get it. It's a wonderful story. And that poster we have back up there, Pray for the Persecuted Church, the 1040 window of, of all the people. And, and, and right now, as we're sitting here tonight, right, there are, there are Christians dying for their faith, separated from their families. Their own families are turning on them and having them put to death and things. So the author here, Paul said that his attention was back to those whom he was writing. He took joyful in the spoiling of your goods. Uh, the material possessions had been confiscated, confiscated by the enemy. And I was thinking about this lady, Marie Cole, today. Now, she's been in the nursing home for like six years, but that's one of the things I always think about when we go there is you've got people who, who lived full lives. Many of them had homes big families, all kinds of possessions, and now they're relegated to this little room at the nursing home with maybe half a closet for, full of stuff, right? And that's it. There's no possessions anymore. They're all, they're all gone. And, and now they're just waiting. They're waiting to go home, right? They're waiting to go before the Lord. And, and you know, the hard part is we all get that to face. <laughs> Here, the Apostle Paul, all those things, you know, he told us in, in Hebrews 10, 34, knowing we have a, in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. So, so early Christians, right, and even today, Christians are going through terrible things. They're suffering emotionally, you know, physically, financially. These things are happening. They were being beaten abused, put into prisons. Their, their material goods were all being confiscated. They were stripped of all their material possessions and basically turned into just uh, into paupers. 
I always think, of, uh, as we see now, there's a lot of homeless people in Vermont and a lot of guys standing on the street corners. And some of these guys are young men that have been standing there for a while at the same corners. And I always try to go by. If, if there's a chance to stop, I'll give them, like, a water or something. I say, you know, there's all kinds of places looking for work. If you can stand here all day, you can get a job. <laughs> now, I know that may not seem <laughs> very loving, but it's, it's true, right? right? They should be... They should be coming, and they ought to be in a church where they could get some help and encouragement from the Word of God of things. So because these folks were enduring some of these things, they, in some cases, there were people where the cost got too high. And, uh, you know, don't quit, basically, is what Paul is telling us to do. Don't quit. Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. And we have need of patience. And, you know, patience is a hard thing, and we know that. The Bible says tribulation, work of patience, and patience, hope. The only way you get patience is by enduring tribulation and going through those things. So when bad things happen, we're not supposed to quit God's people. We're supposed to never turn our back on God, but keep on going. You know, I had to ask these my questions for myself. You know, have we prayed about something and endeavored to trust the Lord for it, not to get what you want? In some cases, only have things get worse. Have you prayed and asked God for healing for somebody or for someone? And the sickness only got worse as they died. And we just know recently two, two sisters in our congregation, right, both have gone on to be with the Lord. And, you know, we prayed for them and, and prayed, hey, if the Lord would be your will, you know, to heal them. And he could have healed them. But he didn't. He took them home. Have you prayed and asked God for financial help and your situation got worse? <laughs> Or, you know, if you, if you prayed to get God out of some difficult situation, and, and in some cases, you know, that, that hasn't happened, but sometimes the problems even get worse. And does that mean that God has forsaken us? No. Uh, does it mean that our faith has failed? No, it doesn't at all either. Uh, we just need to remember and keep our eyes on the Lord, right, that he's going to take us through these things. So in verses 32 to 35 of our text, you know, faith knows that God can do anything. You know, we've got plenty of, that's the reason God left us this Bible and, and all the stories and the people that had gone through trials and tribulations but never turned their back on God. Daniel in the lion's den. How can that thrill you to, to know that you were thrown into a den full of lions and he came out unscathed? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> the fiery furnace where the furnace gets heated up seven times where the people throwing them in got burnt. And, and nothing happened with them, right? And, of course, we know the Lord, you know, the Son of Man was walking in the fire with them. Moses and the children of Israel went through the, the Red Sea on dry ground. The Ten Commandments, you know, goes on every year, right? I mean, I saw it with Charlton Helson and stuff, but I love that account, right, when you think of, of the people parting. And I still try to think of how can the Hebrew people have been so, how can they have been so unbelieving after they saw this mighty miracle of God? And yet, and got to the other side, and very shortly after, right, didn't trust God and wanted to turn away. But we're no different than they are. We wouldn't have been no different. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have given God any slack either. Yeah. God brought Peter out of prison. He brought Paul and Silas out of prison. So, you know, those are, those are great things. They're great miracles that could, could have happened only by the power of God. You know, there's been wonderful things that God has done for me. I've given my testimony here, and I know that it's the direct hand of God, that he's allowed some things to happen for, for me in my life. Each breath I'm now grateful for. I'm going on six years, you know, when I almost died of sepsis. I got had a couple heart stents this last year. I mean, God has been unbelievably wonderful to me. I, you know, I had those stents before I had a heart attack, so they caught, they caught it before anything happened. And many other things. When I think of my family, and I think of, uh, of the blessings. Um, the Bible is clear. God is all-powerful. And we have many verses that tell us about that in the Bible. Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And there's nothing too hard for him. And yet we look at a world today where people are just almost raising their hands in, in direct defiance of God. When difficult things come our way, we always want the same thing, right? We want out in a lot of cases. I don't think any of us really enjoy having trouble come our way. Um, but we do know that, that uh, it makes us stronger when we trust in the Lord and we know that he takes us through things. I mean, you remember some of these others, verse 36 of our text. There was Zechariah who was stoned to death. 
Isaiah was put in a trunk of a hollow cedar tree. King Manasseh had his men saw him in half. Stephen was stoned to death. Can you imagine being stoned to death? And yet we know the voice, the words of Stephen. I, I listened to a program this week. It was talking about a physical doctor or a medical doctor was talking about the pain that Jesus went through, the whole process of his body breaking out, what happens in the crucifixion process, and all the medical things that were happening. And it's just, it's mind-blowing to think of the physical pain and suffering that our Lord did. Uh, the amount of places he walked, the amount of time he walked, even carrying the, the, the piece of the cross, right, that he had to bring to his thing. Uh, and then on top of that, he'd been up for days, you know, he'd been up all night, Walking all that time. So Jesus, you know, was a, was a carpenter. He was a man's man. He, uh, he was tough to endure all that. Doesn't even talk about him crying out in agony when the nails were being put in his hands and his feet and uh, his, his beard being torn out. And yet we know all those perfect Old Testament prophecies about him were fulfilled. And 700 years earlier, a lot of that stuff was written in Isaiah, right? And, and it's just, it's phenomenal. Many early Christians were fed to the lions, torn apart by wild dogs. You know, we've seen that in the account of Fox's Book of Martyrs, all those things that have happened to people. So we should never, we should never get our understanding of God from our circumstances. You know, if, if God is with me, then why is this happening to me? You know, we shouldn't be saying that. We should know God's in control, right? And we may not understand any of this stuff, but we need to trust him. He's got a reason for it all. Consider what happened to Lazarus. Lazarus in John 11 got sick. The Bible says the sisters of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, sent to Jesus, saying their brother was sick. And Jesus said, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus in John 11, 5. And then said Jesus in verse 14, unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. So Jesus knew that. And, you know, what purpose did he have for Lazarus actually dying with him not getting there? But he, he had a point to prove, right? And obviously he, he, did what he, he did what he said he was going to do, and he proved it. Jesus loved them, he said in verse 5. And yet, why would he say that, that he was glad at that point? Why would he say something so harsh? Because he had a greater plan. And, and let's face it, folks, God's plan is not our plan. Yeah, I wouldn't do, and, and praise God for that. The Bible says his ways are higher than our ways. Uh, I would only mess things up. And that's what we're seeing happen in the world today. Where does morality come from, if not from God? All these people that say they believe in something, the, the atheists, the agnostics, uh, the people that have some kind of moral code to say there is no God, then what makes something moral? Why isn't there just complete debauchery, right? And people doing what's right in their own eyes. Who defines what sin is if it doesn't come from the moral code of God? In Romans 8, 35, the Apostle Paul asked a question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But in verse 37, Paul states, hey, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So what a great thing. He didn't say we're conquerors from God who brought us through all these, away from these troubles. He said in all these things, in tribulation, in distress, in persecution. And we know the Apostle Paul, he actually, you know, he knew what he was talking about because he went through all those things. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten, stoned, whipped three times, right, with a cat of nine tails. I mean, he had terrible things happen to him. In the water, in the water, you know, in the shipwreck. God says, be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So God is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do to me. So the best place that we get everything about God is from the Bible. Uh, it's it's just amazing how this is a living book. You know, Brother David's talked about how many times he's gone through different Bibles and highlights different things. You know, if you think of how many times, every time you read it, you learn something new from God's Word. 
it's like, wow, I never saw that before. And it's like, it's just amazing how God, how God speaks to our hearts that way. John the Baptist made that mistake almost. You know, he was by the River of Jordan. He was preaching. He preached with power and said, repent for the kingdom of God is a hand, kingdom of heaven is a hand. John even dared tell a king the truth about the king's sin. And we know that that got him, right? Got him in jail. It was interesting. You know, I don't know how you, if you guys have thought about that story when, when he's in jail now and Jesus, you know, John kind of almost like he doubts what's going on because he says, is, you know, is Jesus the one? And we know in the beginning, right? If Jesus really is the Messiah, if he has all this power and God told me to preach about it, why am I in prison? He could have been thinking that, right? You know, he had almost maybe lost his faith. John told his messengers, you know, to, hey, go ask Jesus if he's really the one who should come or should we be looking for somebody else? And yet John was there when Jesus was baptized. He heard God the Father, right? He saw the Holy Spirit descending on him. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So, so he obviously knew the right, the right choice. It's one thing to have faith to escape a situation, but it's also another thing to have faith to endure the same thing. And that's where, you know, faith is not receiving from God what you want. It's accepting from God what he's willing to give us. And that's a, that's a very hard thing. You know, the big question when we're sick is not that, you know, do we have the faith to be healed? And we've heard that question, right? Many places in the Bible, Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole. But in many other places, Jesus just said, I, I, he's doing it for his glory. I always think of the ten lepers. Jesus healed ten lepers, right? Only one leper came back to thank him. Where were the other nine? Were they not? Can you imagine having leprosy and getting healed and not coming back and not being grateful? And yet, that's the way people, that's the way we are. So the ways of God are beyond our comprehension. You know, God can deliver us from anything, but he may not choose to do that. You know, you look at different things that happen, you know. Uh, King Herod executed James by cutting off his head. After James dies in the, in the book of Acts, later on, Peter's put in prison. Peter's miraculously delivered from prison. So you say, why? Why did God do that, right? Why did one, one, one die and one go? Well, now we know all the apostles died martyrs' deaths. They all died for the Lord, eventually, <laughs> including Peter. Uh, yeah, and John you know, died on the Isle of Patmos. But uh, I can't explain why they got released. Did God love Peter more than he loved James? James, no, I don't think so. It's just that's the way God allowed God allowed it to work out that way. I think about it now. Think about Brother Jim Valenti being gone home. Think of Brother Wayne. Think of Sister Bonnie. And you say, wow, they were great testimonies, right, witnesses. And there, there was more for them to do. Why did God take what he did? I think about me. And, and believe me, if I don't feel guilty and I think God, I could have been dead, and I think, wow, God, did you really save me for uh, uh, some greater purpose? Am I anywhere coming close to what you'd have me do? And, you know, God's, the Bible's full of promises that God made to people. He promised to, live, to give the land of Canaan to Abraham. But it took, you know, hundreds of years of much affliction before he got it. He promised the meek are going to inherit the earth. And they may have not inherited it today, but we will inherit it someday. A study in the, in the book of Revelations has been wonderful. Sometimes it seems like God has forgotten what he promised to do, doesn't it? But he, he doesn't. Um, we just need to, to realize that God is going to stand by his promises. And it's hard for us to understand that and to trust it. And, you know, trust and obey. I was thinking of that song, trust and obey. Look at it here tonight. God bless you faithful that are, that are here. <laughs> And you think, what's more important about hearing the Word of God? And it's like, I love a midweek service because we need it. Yeah, we need it. And I mean, we can still study and read every day what you should be doing. You should be studying and reading on your own. But we need to hear, we need to hear the Word of God. We need to come gather together. Um, there's much to be done. There's much to be done. You know, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought to, before Nebuchadnezzar for refusing to worship his beast, the idol that was made for him, the king said in Daniel 3.15, You shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Their answer to Nebuchadnezzar was a great statement of faith in God. Right? They said, Hey, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. 
If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So how about us? You know, can, we, can we echo that sentiment? Can we say the same thing, that he would be willing to do that, that God is able to deliver me? that he's able to heal our bodies, that he can help us in whatever problem that we have or whatever we're going through. Yeah, so I, we just need to realize that, that when we're walking through these hard places, you know, that God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing, and we just need to keep trusting in him. And it sounds like a broken record, right? But that's really, that's really what our life is in God. Not, not give up, never quit. Wait till the last time. Our last breath is going to be determined when God happens. That's why it's such a blessing. I was thinking of the nursing home. We got to go Easter. Kanayo came, and we were able to just go and say hello to people because we weren't doing a service that day. Uh, we brought some of the Bible studies, things that I had just to say hi people, let them know, tell them we're praying for you, and you know, sorry we're not here doing a service for you. But it's uh, there's a couple of Catholic people that are there, wonderful people, and uh Leonard Lean <laughs> and this Larry Mary. Uh, I don't know if you met Leonard or not, but really just wonderful people. And uh, they've been faithful in coming down. They're, they're more faithful than almost anybody else coming down and, and, and really a blessing. And they enjoy hearing the word of God. Uh, and I'm just thinking Leonard's really crippled up. He's got something with his neck. I'm, I'm not really sure. But he's been on oxygen now. Mary's in her 90s. And sweet lady, she's just a uh, just sweet woman. You know, she keeps losing her glasses, keeps losing things. That, but uh, it's uh, all I know is I used to joke. I was thinking, Brother Dave Pagani. Remember when we went there the first time? <laughs> One day we were going up the elevator and we we looked at each other, and started laughing. I said, I bet you God is preparing us to be in this place. <laughs> He's getting us ready now to to be a good witness, a testimony, right? If we make it there, so. All right, that's really it tonight. Make it a short message tonight. Let's, uh, let's close in prayer and, and uh, pray for especially those under persecution right now. And, you know, I think of Roger. You know, Roger's getting ready to get baptized as well. What a blessing. Uh, we have a baptism coming up. It's going to be a special time. Um, uh, and I'm sure him, you know, coming to faith this late in his life and now to, to see the, the woman that he loves uh, going home to be with you, it's going to be going to be hard for him. So pray for him and pray for, pray for those that are hurting today. Father, we thank you for this time tonight. Thank you for your grace. Lord, I pray that you please uh, watch over these folks, Lord. Father, help each one of us, uh, Lord, to, to have faith in you and trust in you, Lord, and, and not worry uh, what's going to happen, Father. Uh, as much as we don't understand. Help us not to get upset. Help us not to, to worry about people. You know, you're the righteous judge. Nobody gets away with anything, Father. Give us compassion towards people because they need you. People need the Lord more than ever today. And especially right now, all the crazy laws that are happening, Father, all the craziness uh, that's going on, all, all the hatred between people. And Lord, that you would just uh, have your will in your way, please. Father, uh, pray for Pastor and his wife, uh, Lord. Uh, help them to, to get back here soon. I know it uh, must have been very hard for Pastor to not be here on, on Resurrection Sunday, Lord. So lift them up. And Father, we thank you. Ask you to give us a good rest of the night. Give us safe travel and mercies home. In Jesus' name, amen.